with you guys, uh, Eric Dubey. Uh, we're just uh, in Thailand here doing some, some yoga and some practices of uh, breathing. It's been pretty interesting and having some conversations about the, the geocentric model, flat earth and all that. Uh, so, I don't know how to start this, uh, <laughs> Eric. <laughs> it's been like very, yeah, cool for me to meet somebody like, uh, of, you know, of your like that that helped me opening this door of uh, flat earth of, and as a friend Guillermo Wood said in Chile like uh, it's a door that opens or let you enter to a hall full of other doors you know so that's a little bit where where I would like to to go with this like uh, like we've been doing yoga now uh, you taught me some pretty amazing practices of uh, the breathing uh, we talk also about the the food, you know, and the importance of that. So you're a vegan, and you've been vegan for a while, over a decade. Now. Can you can you tell the little a little bit of that story? How did you start? Uh, how did you start like that process of uh, taking care of your body and your health? Well, we uh, we mentioned, you know, my the very first little bit was uh, I wanted to be big and strong and yeah. I decided to do the, the thing that most muscle heads do and work out lifting weights every single day and eat six meals a day to bulk up and get as big as I could and after a year of you know following the whole weightlifting protein bashing regiment I managed to gain a whopping 15 pounds which is not much not like seven kilos <laughs> yeah seven kilos yeah um, and then I also managed to develop tonsillitis at the end of that, uh, which is basically your, your, your glands in your throat swelling to the point that I couldn't swallow for two weeks. Or I could swallow, but uh, I'd have violent convulsions just from swallowing my own saliva every couple of minutes. It was terrible. And so I couldn't eat for a couple of weeks. I just drank liquids. And by the end of the couple of weeks, I'd <laughs> lost the seven kilos. I'd, I'd lost 20 pounds. And the wow. muscle definition, I didn't work out, and I was just dejected and feeling like I wasted a year <laughs> trying to get to a level of, of aesthetic health um, that just completely went away. And I also felt like my body was telling me, by having my glands and my throat swell up to the point that I couldn't eat anymore, basically saying, hey, this six meals a day of sausage and omelets and ice cream and just random anything that I would an Ameri help American help diet is, is based American on that. Diet. Yep. American diet is based on, uh, and it just it made it so that I could no longer swallow. It's like it's your body just telling you, nope, no, no, <laughs> I no, don't no, no more of that. You're done with that. <laughs> and so, so yeah, I just had fruit smoothies and stuff for a couple of weeks, and and so that started to change my thinking about I need to look at health more holistically and not just the aesthetic part where I just yeah. I wanted to bulk up, I wanted to have the muscles, and you know I'm a skinny lanky tall dude and yeah. I get made fun of for it ever yeah. since a kid and so most people they you'd like to be a little bigger than you are um, but uh, you know that happened and so I started thinking about how you know health is a lot more than the exterior yeah you gotta look good inside you gotta you gotta you know worry about what you're actually putting into your yeah. body so from there I stopped eating six meals a day and, and eating whatever and started researching what, what should we actually be Eat. eating, how much and, and, and what. And that's when I started getting into vegetarianism and, and learning that you know you, you don't need meat for protein. So you start reducing a little bit or you... Well, first or just you, researching. I, yeah, I wasn't, yeah. I, I, most people realize that the standard American diet isn't the pinnacle of health. <laughs> So there's yeah, obviously yeah. something yeah. that needs to be tweaked yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I actually, I mean, while I was on that, that year, I was kind of doing the paleo, keto. Yeah, keto. There's a bunch of uh, Atkins. There's a bunch of words for it. Yes. They, they make a new title for it, like every yeah. every couple yeah. of years. But it's the same thing. What it is somehow justifying like their way. Of, yeah. Yeah. A high fat, low carb diet is basically what it is. Heavy yeah. on the animal products. Yeah. And what I found through research and through my own experience is that. The, the best diet is actually the exact opposite of that, which would be a high-carb, low-fat diet, low on the animal products, ideally no animal products, yeah. and getting everything from plant sources. Plant-based. I mean, you think of the protein that your animals get, you know, where do those animals get the protein? Well, from Grass the plants or that they're eating. Plants, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it, it's actually better for you to get it from the source than to have it 
you know, uh, go through the flesh of an animal, and then you have to break down the flesh of the animal through your digestive process to get it back to the original amino acids and everything yeah. that you can utilize in the first place. So um, it's more bioavailable to just have it that way, and it's better for the environment, and of course better for the animals. So it's kind of a, a tripartite thing you find out eventually that not only is vegetarianism, veganism, plant-based eating, you know, even if you're not going full, yeah. lowering your intake lowering. Of, yeah. of animal products and upping the intake of plants yeah. is, is good for you. Yeah. It's good for the animals because you're not uh, breeding them into existence and causing them suffering and death through uh, supply and demand. Because basically, you know, whether you want to think of it that way or not, every time you go to the supermarket and you buy some meat or some eggs or you're dairy, you're support the, the industry only exists because, because people you, are you fund it that way. True. And the less people that fund it, the less yeah. um, there is of it. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so there's the ethical aspect, the health aspect, and then the environmental aspect. Like we were saying, it takes 16 times the amount of acreage in plant life just to feed, say, one acre of animals. Uh, whereas if you were to plant 17 acres and just eat, everybody ate the plants directly, yeah. you eliminate the suffering, you're healthier, and yeah. I mean, the, uh, you can have more food in less space that way. <laughs> so animals actually take up a bunch of space. That's interesting to do so. And it's, so cool, it's cool how like uh, these two like concepts or like visions or somehow points of views converge in the end, like, you know, because we were talking just before of how because I, I asked Eric, like, uh, I, I'm pretty skinny too, as you can see. And I was like, always been skinny, always trying to gain muscles or, you know, be, be, be bigger, as TV tells us, you know, since we're kids. So I was asking him, how was your, like, you know, a change or your step into, like, a becoming a vegan? Was it through, through you, like, for, like, personal growth? Or it was it for, like, you know, the, the, the animals and the planet and, I don't know, and all these like outside thing that we, we put and you said something pretty cool that it was like hey, how do they they both of them in the end converge in right. the well I yeah. don't know if you could repeat that sure. in, a, in a little bit of... well it started for me like like yourself it was more a selfish thing in the sense yeah. that I wanted to be healthy and vital and, and have as much energy as possible and obviously from my keto paleo experiment that didn't work I, I tried going the opposite direction and doing uh, high carb high plant diet yeah and I had way more energy and was feeling a lot better on it and so then I started researching the ethical aspect of it and realizing that basically they've been lying to us about this whole protein myth or the calcium and milk myth or the b12 myth there's a bunch of these vegan myths where they, they've got uh, certain things that they tell you that you need that you can't get from plants yeah. and the more you research the more you find that it's all bunk you, you yeah. can yeah. more optimally and more bioavailable often um, you can yeah. get from plant sources and so then you start to see like the sinister aspect of it where you're like so not only have they been lying to me to the point that I'm eating unhealthy food and causing myself uh, to be unhealthy I'm killing and, and causing the suffering of animals just because I believe this lie that I need to eat their flesh for protein, for mm. example, and so that, that, that or was because kind of it's my culture, I don't know. Like in, here, in, in Ar there is going to be a lot of people in Argentina and Spain, like uh, watching this thing, and like uh, I myself, I was born in Argentina, and like uh, that's the way we eat. You American, like that's the way you eat, and, and we always put this excuse, you know, like right. uh, it's the way we were raised. But it's it's interesting how once you start from a personal journey. Then all the other journeys or all the other visions start like uh, complementing each other, right. and you become I don't know like uh, we can now I'm an ethical you, vegan you know like at a, first it was never yeah, even a concern I, I love my dog I love cats but I eat pigs and cows just yeah. like everybody else it yeah. didn't seem like even a concern to me at yeah. the beginning but once I actually started eating that way and was feeling the health benefits it started to, to click and yeah. it's like wait a minute. This, this this is better for me and then you and obviously it's better for the animals exactly so I'll end you learn it's actually better for the environment too so it's like the tripartite uh, benefit that they're denying us by these few lies about protein and calcium and b12 and all these things that people believe because we've been told that but they're, they're just not true I mean yeah. b12 is a bacteria that comes from the soil you get that from plants and mushrooms just like you can from anywhere else Calcium, they say it's in milk, but there's four times more calcium in sesame seeds than a lot of seeds. Milk. A lot of seeds, yeah. And of course, uh, milk is so acidic 
that it actually causes you to Decultify, leach yeah. calcium out of your yeah. bones yeah. Um, to 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 to, to, um, what's the word? to alkalize your bloodstream. Yeah. So, literally, um, drinking milk is bad for your bones, and you, wow. ends up, you end up leaching calcium from yourself by doing stuff like that. So, there's these myths that are and protein. That's another one. I mean, plant protein is superior to animal protein in literally every way. Nor do we even need it. Yeah. In the sense that if you're eating enough food not to be malnourished, you're yeah. getting enough protein. Yeah. Protein is not like a, a super vital nutrient that most people aren't getting enough of. Yeah, no, 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 actually, like, yeah, most of the people have enough. Like, there's, like, I don't know. You have too much. That's what yeah. most cancers are caused by an excess of yeah. protein. protein. So people are actually eating too much. That's what people should be worried about is, you know, you're having too much protein, not where do vegans get their protein. We get plenty. We have enough. Um, Meat eaters yeah. mostly have too much, and it's causing problems. What about like a, I, I know we didn't talk about this, but what about sugar? Like is sugar a big thing too, or refined sugar is not good? Yeah, neither are um, like uh, aspartame and some of these sugar yeah. substitutes. Artificial, these, these are bad. But, uh, but fruit, natural fruit fruits? sugar, natural sugars are what your whole body operates. That makes on. so much sense, or not? Because it's put it there in a plant, like put it for you, like uh, all the animals eat it. Like we're just another animal, right? Why shouldn't we eat it? They're not even as bad for your teeth, like yeah. just sugar is not so good for your teeth, but fruit sugar is not nearly as bad as refined sugar in that aspect as well. So, you know, it's interesting how like it. so many aspects start like a converging. Com how, is it converging, yeah, converging right? Yeah. yeah, right. Like yoga too, you know, exercise. Right. Right. How yoga means union, or not? Exactly. So yeah, how it's like all getting together into because yoga is another practice that you've been doing for a while, yeah. and it's also like in the same direction so that's pretty cool Eric <laughs> pretty excited then so wanted to say uh, ah, about the flat earth football club cool. what do you think about that oh, uh, that's great. Yeah, uh, yeah. responding to Javi Poves hi Eric how are you I'm come back uh, to home uh, after win the first match uh, here in Spain, uh, I am Javier Poves, the Flat Air FC president, and and nothing. Uh, I would like to meet you, maybe in the future. Thank you so much. Um, I am maybe uh, Flat Air uh, for you, for Iro Landucci, for Oliver Ibanez, and and thank you, thank you so much. Ciao. Yeah, what's his name? Javi. Javier Poves. Uh, yeah. Thanks for the, uh, the little uh, message. That was great. I um, actually just saw a documentary that John Thor put together with some of like uh, him on stage and their song and everything. And that was my. I knew th about the football club from a little advertisement, but I hadn't heard anything else about it until I saw that. And that got me pumped. Actually, I was yeah. really excited uh, to see that you know they're getting the word flat Earth out there on such a big stage. Like he said in that presentation. They're basically forcing all these media yeah. personalities and TV yeah. channels to say the word Flat Earth FC yeah. every time they're going to talk about the club, which is brilliant. So. And it's amazing because, uh, yeah, Javi, like the other day he was calling the, you know, the bed companies, like uh, Bed365, I don't know what, what are the names, but all these big companies that make money out of the sport. Yeah. So he called them saying like, hey, I want my club to be out of this. I don't want to be part of this, you know, gambling thing. Yeah. And then they were like, no, 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 you cannot do that. And there's a whole, a whole story about the uh, having always uh, trying to, to get the team out. But that's a, uh, it's pretty interesting. What would be your, your like recommendation or your, I don't know if advice, but your, yeah, your, your word to all the people that follow you that they, that were somehow initiated in this path of like a opening opening the mind opening the eyes to, to different possibilities what would be your recommendation of, of the, the, the most common question and now what you know and, and then what like right. okay you realize the earth is flat you realize you know it's motion motionless you realize we've been deceived now what what do we do right what do you do what do you, what do you think is well I don't know. yeah um, it's, it's such a big question with, with many possible answers that we actually talked about a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Um, so for instance, one, one angle to approach it from is like the Taoist angle where, you know, you don't really need to do anything. Yeah. You need to be 
yourself and, yeah. and just be in this world with your new knowledge and just that act is already going to change the world so you can be uh, confident in that without having to feel like you've got to oh I gotta do something oh, yeah. I gotta, I'm gonna be an activist and all this yeah. stuff um, you know having said that however if if your beingness feels like uh, you know you'd like to try to, to do some street activism or some indirect activism or you know Socratic questioning of your friends or maybe make a, some videos a documentary you know, there's a bunch of traditional kind of activism that's certainly helpful and if people yeah. are so inclined to do so it's definitely helpful because ultimately you know people ask me like do you think this is ever going to get mainstream in the sense like do you think the world is completely will ever wake up to the yeah. flat earth the only answer i can think to give to that that i always tell everyone is well to be honest the answer to that is completely and You're totally right dependent upon us yeah. i mean if it does it's going to be because we spread the word yeah and if it doesn't it's going to be because we didn't yeah so there's that to consider as well like yeah. if you if you just have your own revelation and then you keep it to yourself and you never do anything to help inform the public yeah um it, like like we talked about being i mean eventually people are going to figure out that you're a flat earther or they're gonna yeah they're gonna, they're gonna learn and you're gonna be dragged into it whether you want to or not yeah um, but if you have the energy and you have the time and you have the means there is a bunch of um, you know direct and indirect kind of activism that we can be doing to help yeah. spread the word yeah um, if you go to ericdubay.com I've got an activism section full of ideas yeah and I have a podcast called solutions to the system which has not only ideas about activism, but also like we were talking about kind of more indirect things like planting your own food, getting off the grid, trying to find a way around taxes and, and some of these uh, constrictive laws and licensing and you know, the free man on the land stuff, as well as yeah. spirituality and health, just uh, getting yourself aligned and getting yourself healthy so that you're not you know, dependent on the system yes. and, and having to feed into it that way. So there's that. There's, there's a lot you can do, yes, a lot. but it's difficult to, to explain it in like a point-by-point -point process. Though, yeah. if, if you're interested in me trying to do that, you can find a 50-minute podcast of me trying to do so <laughs> called Solutions <laughs> to the System. Uh, so that would be my recommendation. So, <laughs> uh, Yeah, that too. It's the, you can find it there. Excellent. And yeah, it's, it's so true about, like uh, you were saying before, of like, it's, it's difficult sometimes to try to organize a lot of people together, to get together and do something. Because they usually say, you know, like uh, divide and conquer, and the opposite would be like uh, let's be, let's be together. Mm -hmm. But uh, this fake, like this fake concept of being together when it's pushed by an agenda mm -hmm. that we don't know. So I like your your answer to that. That you you kind of like to do your your own thing, you know, like just do it, right? Just do it, and, and that's what you were saying before. I don't know if you like inviting everybody to to just do their own, you know growth, development, investigation, like uh, put it out there, like uh, in their own way, because also there's many new ways that we don't know yet, because we only know what we know, but there might be a lot of other angles to, you know, approach the subject, to influence people, to, to move, that we are not seeing yet, so I, I like that, that you said that it's just, yeah, just do it, you know, like I just do it by myself, and then you do yourself, and you do your part, I do my part, and then when we the are, unity happens that way happens just yeah, naturally like individuals standing up eventually will become a unity of flat earthers you know genuine flat earthers rather than trying to congregate everyone into some named entity that we call a unity because a lot of people there's a lot of people trying to do that and and anyone that questions their unity suddenly becomes divisive and on the outside and now now they don't want unity now they want unity with everyone but you because you're asking too many questions or something yeah, like that yeah, so yeah that ends up being the problem with this, this constant call for unity. While it, it sounds good um, on paper, the reality that we know is that there are always going to be wolves in sheep's clothing flocking into our herd, yeah. trying to bring us astray. Yeah. And so if the only thing we're concerned about is unity all the time, and we're not concerned with actually discerning uh, the wheat from the chaff, as you talked about, yeah. you could very easily get duped into Pied Piper leading you away from what you should be doing. What, yeah. So 
I recommend everybody's got their own strengths and weaknesses. They got their own communities. For instance, the, the flat earth football guy. I mean, he's a he's a oh, professional he... football player. You know, what would be the best thing he could do? He 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 thought of it. He figured it out. Well, the best thing I could do with my life, you know, what I'm doing, uh, I can create a whole football team called Flat Earth Football Club. I mean, I couldn't do that. Uh, that wouldn't also, be my exactly. thing that I could yeah. do. Yeah, you don't know how to play soccer, <laughs> maybe you don't know a lot of things. <laughs> right. But he does. And, and so that's his thing. And so, thank you, Javi, and thank you to everybody. Like, you know, Iru Landucci, or like, you know, Hermano Barea, or Padma, or Guillermo Wood. Everybody, They've like... They've all got their niche. Yeah. And, and they've all got their niche communities, like the, some of the people you just said. Ramon Freire, that's another one. There's so many guys that are like, yeah. And so Sorry. find that, you know, in, in people that are looking, like, well, what can I do next? Well, don't ask me. So, so you think <laughs> the trip is more to the inside, yeah, and then yeah. it would flourish, or it would... Exactly. Everybody's got their own thing that they can add, and I'm sure even if that thing is just, you know, making a stamp and stamping you know, All earth day. is flat on every on bill that every passes. Bill, yeah. You know, some people aren't comfortable with talking about it with people. A lot of people know the earth's flat, yeah, they watch videos for years, but they've never said a word to anyone because they're not confident or, or maybe they tried saying a word to someone and they yeah. got shot down and they don't they don't want to go there anymore. Yeah. But that doesn't mean they have to just shut up and, yeah. and do nothing. Or they can it, create another web another I don't know, translate your documentaries or like a peak information that they like and repost it or exactly. repost it under another name. But it's just yeah, there's multiple ways. It's like, like yeah, I agree. So the best is it is just for everybody to get creative with yourself and think, mm. what can I offer personally? Or your own story. A lot of people do that. They don't have popular YouTube channels, but they can open a new one and give their story, and that just adds to the algorithm and it adds to the potential that people are gonna see, especially people in their life, whoever subscribes to them or comes across their videos. Mm. Um, so yeah, just get creative and. and your, yourself instead of looking out there what everyone else yeah. is doing yeah. what would you like what do you think you could yeah. you could bring to the community yeah short question uh, what about like the uh, like the, the YouTube and all that uh, like do you think we should like migrate to a naturally migrate to another like a source of, or, or platform like you you done already yeah um, I mean ideally do it all because YouTube is so censored it's that weird. you're probably gonna get Band, so you wouldn't want to put all your eggs in that basket. Though at the same time, I wouldn't recommend not going on YouTube because and just putting all your eggs in that basket. Right, right. Yeah. Every, yeah. Most people are on YouTube. Uh, that's yeah. the place people go for video sharing. So, for instance, I'm on BitChute and BitTube and Library and Brighteon and uh, a couple many others, as and anywhere can. I can think of, to, so that they won't censor them. But not many people are going to see them. But at the same time, I can bring people from YouTube to the other sites. So yeah. I recommend doing it all. You know, up upload to YouTube, but also upload to some of the more secure sites that aren't going to censor you so much. That way, you get it in multiple places. Uh, you get it in the, the main place where everybody is YouTube, yeah. and then you get it in the other places where at least you're not going to get censored, and so you don't have to worry about re-uploading every couple months. Like exactly. Like exactly. So many people having that, that those those problems, no, those problems, like getting the the channel. Well, you got the channel. I've had three channels, three YouTube channels shut down. I've had a YouTube channel shut down. I've had I was banned from Bandcamp two weeks ago. CD Baby I've had my website taken offline and my blog taken offline. So and yeah, my forum taken so offline. everybody, literally re everything, everybody reposting your 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 videos. Oh, I encourage so everyone like, to repost well, everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I allow everything that is quality. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And the last last question for like uh, this was from a brother Padma from Chile. He asked me uh, to to ask you. What is what? How do you see like a, you know how like all the ancient cultures have this common knowledge of the flat like a, of the flat motion motionless uh, Earth uh, and the Vedas too and the, all the like all the scriptures too as as long as we know you know so so how. Yeah, <laughs> it's a difficult what's, what's question. With <laughs> what's with that? <laughs> well, what about that? Eh? Yeah. But, I mean, I mean, it's a difficult it's, question to answer. It's universal if you go back hundreds and thousands of years that all across the world, through all cultures and all religions, all spiritual systems, all scriptures, mention a flat and motionless earth. Yeah. And not a single one mentions a spinning, rotating, revolving ball hurtling around the sun. <laughs> We're the only that, ones! <laughs> We're the only ones. That's, that's a modern invention, but it's been so successful that in the past few hundred years, that modern invention has made it into the minds and hearts of literally every person on Earth nowadays. Well, the past few years, actually, that's been 
has been trailing off, but say up until 2014, that was, I would say heliocentrism was the most successful covert religious indoctrination yeah. in history. Yeah. People yeah. were believing it's a in a religion, it's basically, a religion. It's it's a religion. An outer space type religion, without even knowing that they were believing in something that had no basis in reality. If you listen to modern science, yeah. apparently we are now at the pinnacle of evolution and humans are the smartest and most developed that we've ever been. Yeah. But if you listen to ancient religious systems like the Vedas, they tell you the exact opposite, that we've gone to a devolution and we're now in Kali Yuga, which is the a devolved state. Uh, yeah, the lowest of, of the cycle. And uh, that's I good. I tend to think that that's where we are. Um, and so. Uh, there's only, I think, there's only up to go from here. Yeah, exactly. We're at the honest. lowest. We cannot be lowest than this. You know, yeah. we cannot be worse than than what we are. Right. But at the same time, like I, I like your way of uh, living here in Thailand and um, of like mixing. You know, not not just be a, uh, not just be on the computer or not just be on this because it's, it's a trap sometimes. You know, for me, myself, like I was sharing this with you and you were like, yeah, it's. Is we have to deal with these two forces. Like we were raised in a way, like we we have all these amazing technologies that they let us, you know, communicate and like you know spread these words. But at the same time, they can become uh, uh, like a roof that doesn't let us grow anymore. You know, a friend of mine said this about something like uh, this was a was a step in my life that allowed me to see like so many other things that I was not able to see, you know, imagine having a step and you're too small and you have the step and then you can reach the window and you can see a whole world of different things. But then it became a roof that it didn't let him grow anymore. So I, I like that about, you know, your path, what you're doing of like, you know, balancing these two forces. And like, uh, yeah, I just wanted to say this. It's cool. yeah, no, no, I agree. I, we definitely, you know, with the digital aid, that, that is what, Kali Yuga has brought us is high technology. Yeah. Nobody can deny that. Yeah. We definitely have some of the highest technology metallurgy that we've ever had. But uh, has that brought us closer together, really? I mean, this, this happier. level of, or happier or um, more knowledge of Earth and the universe? I think, if anything, that's it's advanced the propaganda. So we're, we're now propagandized to the point that we don't know. Yeah, we're repeating up, up the propaganda. We are literally, they tell us, you know, we're broadcasting down yeah. and down is up. And <laughs> yeah. Motionless is spinning and spinning is not. Yeah. Uh, everything's turned on its head nowadays. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's important for us to, to use these tools, like I said, YouTube and everything. Uh, it's there for us. But at the same time, not to forget the natural world and personal relationships yeah. and, and, and our health and yeah. Kind of things. I was talking with my wife the other day and we were saying like you know how we think that we have to like disconnect from this system and but in real like when in reality there is a system that was already built it for us you know if we like understand like that the, the earth is actually flat and motionless that for me at least is my point of view it makes me think that we were, we are the creation of the creator mm -hmm. and if that's the case that make it really like a fundamental like really important what are we doing in this like you know we're center stage exactly. rather than just being some speck of dust in the fingernail of exactly. God's universe yeah. exactly so so it's not that we we have to like you know create another system there's already a system that it works and we have the technology of this uh, you know of this like uh, modern world that we can use for our, our advantage so Absolutely. get the best out of all right. them I think we're, we very well may be at a turning point because of that. You know, with, with the internet and everything, we have this level of information and communication at our fingertips. That if we do get active, and, you know, in spreading this to everyone, this is what we were talking about. I honestly, think flat Earth is the most important truth. Yeah. Because a, it unlike all other conspiracies and these kind of topics like JFK or 9/11, you can't go to. Dealey Plaza yeah, and find some go DNA 50 years of, ago and yeah. check if the thing was you know? exactly it's, it's you can debate about it endlessly whereas with the earth you can experiment and do your own no. tests and, and tomorrow and the day after tomorrow forever, forever. yeah and find out that this is for real and then once you do find out that flat earth is real like you said it opens up this whole new doorways where the, you, 
you need to re-question a whole bunch of other everything, things. Everything, and, from and medicine to economy. Isn't that what people need? Isn't that what humanity needs right now? Because we're we're going in so many wrong directions about certain things. If you can have like a flat Earth is like a wake up call, kind of like yeah. a red pill or something like the Matrix yeah. analogy. Basically, yeah. it just blows your mind open, and now you become a sponge because you realize I'm wrong about a lot of stuff. I need to find out what's right. Yeah. Unlike JFK or something, yeah. like everybody kind of knows oh, okay, that there's yeah. something fishy there, but they're never going to get to the bottom of it. Yeah. This one, it's super fishy, and you can get right to the bottom of it. And once you do, you realize that you're in an ocean yes. of bad smells. Yeah. yeah. Open the curtains right. and let the sun get seen. <laughs> so yeah, thanks so much, Eric. <laughs> thanks. Okay, guys. I hope uh, yeah this was uh, helpful and uh, well take action then. Yeah. <laughs> Take action within yourself. A flat? Oh, I, I don't know. Should I? I'm not going there. <laughs> <laughs> Sayonara.